We'll get started in just a few minutes, folks. Hello everyone, uh, this is Heidi Walters from the National Association of Energy Service Companies. Thank you for joining our second webinar of the year on building envelope technologies and energy saving strategies. Uh, we'll get started in just a few moments. I'm going to make a few brief remarks now while people are joining us. Um, hopefully you all can hear me. I just want to let everyone know we are going to record the webinar, so I will have a, a link to that recording and the, the presentations, uh, be, and I will send that out later this week. If you need an AIA CEU for this webinar, um, please contact me, Heidi at NASCO.org. Um, we've we just applied, so it hasn't been accepted yet, but I anticipate it will. So it may be a slight delay in getting you your paperwork for that. But if you're interested, just let me know. We will do Q&A at the end of the webinar. So submit your questions through the question feature, and we will try to get to questions um, we have a pretty lengthy presentation here, so if we do not get to all your questions, uh, the contact information for both our presenters are on the slides, and you can contact them directly. Our first speaker is Sven Mame. He's the manager of Building Envelope at the U.S. Department. Technology manager, <laughs> Building Envelope at the U.S. Department of Energy. In this role, he manages the Envelope sub-program within the Emerging Technologies Program. He also leads the Building Technologies Office's Technology to Market Initiatives, Small Business Vouchers Program, and Small Business Innovation Research Program. Our second speaker is Steve Champlin. He's president of Thermalite. Thermalite designs and builds specialty glazing systems used in retrofitting government and large commercial buildings. Uh, thank you all for joining, and I will turn the controls over to Sven. Great. So uh, welcome, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so just wanted to start with the, uh, the purpose of the webinar, um, as uh, Heidi mentioned. Uh, we're going to explore specific windows and opaque building envelope opportunities, technologies, and tools. Uh, and, and we feel that there are uh, significant uh, opportunities, uh, energy savings opportunities with uh, envelope re retrofits. Uh, we've laid out four learning objectives. Um, so uh, starting off uh, with uh, talking about uh, energy losses in buildings and how the envelope plays a significant role. Uh, I'm going to highlight a, a DOE online calculator to estimate the potential energy and cost savings and reduction in moisture transfer from improvements in air tightness. Next, um, I'll uh, also be talking about uh, typical mod modeling assumptions that significantly under or overestimate energy savings. Uh, and then uh, Steve uh, is going to mainly address the um, uh, the fourth one, uh, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, new window technologies and effective retrofitting strategies. So I have a lot of material to cover, um, so I'm going to move pretty pretty quickly. Uh, so <clears throat> with being within, uh, in the buildings technology office. Uh, 
it's uh, this this is an obligatory uh, slide uh, to go over. Uh, as most of you or all of you um, uh, hopefully know, uh, buildings consume about 40% of all uh, energy um, in the U.S. Uh, larger than the transportation sector, as well as larger than the industri industrial sector. Uh, and buildings consume 75% of all electricity, uh, which amounts to an energy bill uh, over $395 billion per year. So a couple of years ago, BTO released a uh, five-year, multi-year, uh, five-year program plan uh, that lays out uh, uh, the various um, market barriers um, and uh, technology barriers uh, and has uh, set strategies for, for the various uh, programs in the office. Uh, and we set a, a, a 2030 goal to reduce uh, the average energy use per square foot uh, in U.S. buildings by 30% below 2010 levels, uh, which is an absolute uh, reduction. Uh, as well as a long-term goal to reduce the average uh, energy yeah. use intensity of U.S. buildings by 50%. Uh, and we have not set a uh, timeline for that, but that's our long-term goal. Um, I'm part of the uh, Emerging Technologies Group, uh, which is really the R&D shop uh, of the Buildings Technology Office. And um, our goal uh, in the R&D uh, arm is to develop cost-effective technologies capable of reducing the building's energy use per square foot by 45% by 2030, relevant to 2010. Now, uh, you may ask uh, why uh, it's 45%, where I just mentioned uh, earlier that uh, uh, the BTO overall goal is, uh, is a 30% reduction by 2030. Uh, this is the a, um, technical potential. So. Uh, if these technologies, uh, cost-effective, high-performing technologies, were adopted overnight, it would um, amount to a 45% uh, reduction in energy use intensity. But uh, as we're all aware, um, technologies don't get adopted overnight, uh, and it takes many uh, years to, to uh, penetrate the market. Uh, and as such, uh, we set a higher uh, technical potential so uh, as to meet the 2030 30% uh, 30 uh, reduction uh, goal um, as at, on an absolute basis. So we follow a couple strategies. Uh, one, uh, we have developed a scout tool um, that uh, really analyzes uh, various building energy efficiency technologies and uh, looks at their potential impact. So this is uh, we we use this to prioritize uh, R and D investments, um, and then uh, we fund R and D through two uh, two main vehicles. One is competitive solicitations, uh, and one is uh, through a national uh, lab um, uh, fund uh, funding um, opportunities. Uh, fo focused uh, specifically at the labs uh, and utilizing their uh, technical cap capabilities. Uh, in terms of the uh, competitive solicitation, there's actually one out on the street. Uh, if you're interested in uh, looking at that, um, uh, it's called the Benefitho, uh, which um, has uh, six, very, uh, six topics. Uh, we also have a uh, solid state lighting uh, so, uh, out on the street as well. Um, so the office looks at um, uh, several technology areas, uh, water, uh, so HVAC, water heating and appliances, solid state lighting, uh, windows and uh, opaque envelope, uh, energy modeling, and uh, sensors and controls. So there are really two strategies for reducing energy consumption. One is um, uh, making more energy efficient machines. Uh, and secondly, be smarter about how we use energy. So uh, developing robust and dynamic materials and systems, uh, looking at um, flexible and uh, reasonable installation methods, uh, looking at it from a systems perspective, uh, which might also impact uh, devices within the building, uh, as well as low cost to enable mars, uh, mass market adoption. So here's, a uh, chart as well as table um, that re represents 
uh, the energy loss through building and closure components. Um, and the envelope in windows really impact over 50% of the loads in the building. Um, if you, if you, uh, so, so these numbers are uh, quads of energy or quadrillion BTUs uh, of, of uh, energy um, uh, flows. Uh, you, you, uh, specifically for, for commercial buildings, uh, you can see that uh, windows, uh, especially uh, conduction, uh, represents a significant, um, uh, a significant um, uh, energy loss, uh, followed uh, closely by uh, infiltration, so air leakage, um, and uh, then uh, walls, uh, so uh, insulation materials, uh, or, or the lack of, uh, and and roofs. So, uh, so, so that. Um, uh, so, so my uh, building envelope uh, R&D program uh, seeks to uh, develop next generation residential and commercial building envelope technologies that reduce the unintentional amount of air moisture exchange and the thermal losses and gains through the building envelope uh, contribute to uh, uh, occupant comfort and have a, a competitive uh, install price to enable mar uh, mass market adoption. We focus both on new construction as well as existing buildings, and uh, uh, roughly for each new construction there's uh, or new building, there are hundred existing buildings. So we uh, do uh, place a um, uh, uh, we do emphasize and place more priority on existing buildings. Uh, in terms of the R and D areas um, uh, that I'm looking at are high performance, low cost insulation materials, uh, air sealing technologies, uh, and um, uh, early stage um, exploration of smart building materials to um, directly address the energy flows um, and uh, losses and gains um, attributed to the uh, building envelope. So next I wanted to uh, talk about um, uh, envelope uh, retrofits uh, specifically. Uh, there are uh, about 50% of um, existing commercial buildings lack or have minimal insulation and lack an air barrier uh, system because they were built before energy codes. Um, uh, also, 75% of existing building stock will still be in service in 2050. Uh, so uh, buildings, as, as you know, have have a long uh, asset lifetime. Uh, yet there's minimal uh, data available on commercial building envelope retrofits um, as it relates to uh, energy efficiency and uh, payback periods. And for that, uh, uh, for uh, and that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, energy service companies are building. Uh, owners um, often place envelope retrofits at the bottom of their list um, because of the uncertainty of, of the energy savings aspects or the perceived um, uh, excessive uh, payback periods. So there's really a need for retrofit data uh, to show building owners and energy service uh, companies about the energy savings potential from building envelope renovations. Uh, so, so we started a uh, project um, out of uh, the Oak Ridge National Lab to gather data from commercial building envelope retrofits to estimate energy savings and payback time, uh, and specifically look at uh, uh, reductions in air leakage, uh, as well as uh, decreases in heat transfer through conduction. Um, and uh, so we collected data before and after retrofits uh, to, again, uh, estimate that energy savings uh, potential uh, and estimate the return on investment and try to disseminate that knowledge to to building owners and energy service uh, uh, providers. Uh, one example is is a uh, retrofit of a, of a small uh, office building in North Carolina. Uh, here some, some of the uh, statistics or, or specs on, on the building. Um, the uh, before and after retrofit, uh, so air leakage uh, was uh, able to be uh, reduced from 2.8 to 
0 0.37 uh, CFMs per square foot at 75 Pascal. Uh, and insulation uh, was, was upgraded from no insulation to R5. And the benefits um, amounted to a 40% decrease in electricity use, 90% decrease in natural gas usage, and an annual savings of $2,400. Um, this is one example. We're, we're still uh, quantifying uh, the various uh, payback times, uh, and we got some additional uh, projects uh, in the in the pipeline. Uh, and if any of you uh, would be uh, amenable to uh, have us uh, actually uh, partner with you and on on any of your uh, if you're conducting any uh, envelope uh, retrofits, uh, we would. Uh, love to uh, uh, be able to uh, get uh, some before and after uh, data um, to, to add to our um, um, uh, explorations of, of retrofits. So um, being within in the building's technology office, obviously we're interested in uh, energy uh, savings uh, benefits of retrofits, but uh, such as um, and also some system savings in terms uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of downsizing HVC and on-site generation. Um, so looking at um, whenever uh, HVC equipment is 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 replaced, um, that is an opportune time to also look at retrofit uh, uh, envelope uh, retrofits, um, as there will be uh, synergies between the two. Uh, but we also realize that there are a lot of non-energy benefits, um, uh, such as uh, higher real real estate uh, value, higher number of customers, um, and uh, now with with all uh, energy conservation measures, uh, obviously payback time is is very critical, um, and uh, there there are several. Uh, areas where um, uh, we feel that um, additional development is required to make them even more um, uh, attractive. Uh, and that brings me to uh, uh, high R insulation materials. Um, here on, on the, in the picture over here are four different insulation materials, all with the same uh, R uh, overall total R value. So the one on the bottom is the vacuum insulation panels. Uh, so the, uh, one inch um, uh, amounts to about the same as like seven or, or so inches uh, of fiberglass. Uh, the difficulty uh, or is that um, all the conventional insulation materials are so cheap, um, but uh, they really span between R and R value of three to six, six and a half perhaps. Um, and the state of the art uh, uh, insulation materials such as uh, aerogel or uh, uh, vacuum insulation panels are uh, have a higher R value for sure, but are uh, uh, just not competitive on, on cost. So I'm focusing on uh, developing low-cost, ultra-low thermal conductivity uh, materials uh, in that uh, area on, on the um, uh, upper uh, left quadrant. Uh, so one example is is a new variant of the vacuum insulation panel that uh, uh, we call the modified atmosphere insulation. Uh, it's practically the same as a, a vacuum insulation panel, just the difference is how the vacuum is, is created, uh, which results in, in about a 60% cost reduction over, or over standard VIPs. Um, now, these panels are sandwiched um, within PolyISO. Uh, so we've already created uh, um, hundreds of of these four by eight uh, polyiso boards with vacuum ins or uh, MAI panels uh, sandwiched in between. Um, and um, uh, we have a uh, so two inch board of, of this um, uh, technology has already yielded an R value of 25. Uh, and um, 
So we're currently uh, next year planning on doing, or later this year, planning on doing uh, an actual uh, commercial roof uh, retrofit. Um, we'll be able to uh, share um, information, more information at that time. Next is uh, air leakage detection. Uh, air leakage is, is extremely important, um, and uh, especially in commercial uh, buildings, there are no real good uh, non-invasive fast ways of, of um, measuring air leakage. Um, you got uh, some of the two um, approaches on the left. Uh, and then on the right uh, hand side, there are a couple under development, uh, the aerosol using aerosol sealants. Um, this is a sort of uh, a variant uh, um, of, of uh, air, um, aeroseal uh, for duct sealing, but um, applied to uh, actual envelope um, air sealing. Um, this currently can only be used in unoccupied uh, uh, buildings um, and ideally uh, ones that where, where the, where the uh, actual interior skins, uh, skin hasn't been um, installed yet. Uh, but they're also looking at uh, applying this to, to existing uh, occupied uh, buildings. So, so stay tuned on that. And then an earlier uh, stage um, technique using acoustics uh, could enable, uh, so would, would enable you to uh, um, diagnose the extent and location of inf infiltration uh, without even having to uh, use um, pressurization fans or blower doors. So there's still uh, quite a few technological gaps uh, that remain, uh, but uh, we're looking to develop a, a diagnostic um, tool that uh, would be feasible for occupied and furnished uh, buildings are unobtrusive and uh, non-invasive, uh, easy to implement and economical. So this brings me to uh, an air leakage uh, opportunity assessment tool uh, which is quite uh, exciting. And uh, so I'll be co covering a um, couple questions. First, why do we care about air leakage? And I um, already um, mentioned the importance of infiltration in terms of energy loss in the building. Why do we care about moisture transfer? Uh, talk about the web-based tool to estimate energy savings associated with air tightness and the uh, recent addition of moisture transport to the web-based tool and provide some examples. So I already uh, mentioned this, uh, buildings use a lot of energy. Um, and in 2014, we developed uh, or uh, released a uh, Windows and Building Envelope Research and Development R&D plan uh, or roadmap. Uh, uh, it, uh, in it, uh, we looked at the um, uh, various um, technologies or, or components in, in the building uh, and uh, plotted them, um, uh, uh, plotted the stage payback period versus primary energy savings. Um, and air sealing systems in both the residential and commercial space are uh, one of the um, best ways uh, to to uh, and low payback um, uh, ways to improve energy efficiency in buildings. Um, you might see that uh, some of the other uh, bars are have a, a pretty high payback period, um, and that's what why we're trying to address these uh, through uh, additional materials uh, development uh, for low cost and high performance. Um, and then in terms of moisture, uh, this is a picture of, of the um, uh, building uh, circa 1990 in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, that has experienced moisture uh, problems. Uh, here's an article uh, in, in the news uh, of a uh, building material supplier making an offer in a defective siding lawsuit. Uh, so moisture in buildings, uh, moisture is involved in almost all building envelope performance problems, uh, namely energy uh, inefficiency, mold, and uh, indoor air quality, 
uh, corrosion, wood rot, termites, and staining. So we, uh, uh, so uh, through uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, uh, we uh, were being uh, were developing an air leakage calculator, and I'll be talking a whole lot more about that. Uh, first of all, air leakage uh, calculation is not a trivial task, um, uh, and uh, energy and cost savings depend on the air leakage rate, uh, weather, building type, HVAC efficiency, energy and demand prices. Uh, so the challenges for um, of, of, uh, create, uh, measuring air leakage and modeling air leakage in buildings uh, is because it depends on multiple variables, uh, envelope air tightness, uh, HVC system operation, occupancy, weather, stack effect. Um, and for, for uh, because of this complexity, um, there are typical assumptions that are used um, to, to try and get a handle on, on this and, and simplify uh, the uh, modeling approach. So one is, um, uh, a typical assumption is that there is constant leakage rate uh, in buildings, which is not uh, true at all. It's very um, uh, uh, it 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 varies by the hour. It varies by the day, uh, and also um, the uh, leakage rates uh, from simplified algorithms uh, result in in an under or overestimated uh, energy uh, use. So he, uh, uh, energy plus is is uh, often used and is really a, uh, a great uh, program that we supported even uh, for, for uh, decades. Um, and there are some some modules uh, in energy plus uh, for infiltration modeling, but. They typically do not take into account temperature difference, stack effect, and uh, wind direction, and and uh, air leakage are highly dependent on those variables. Uh, so, in terms of uh, the uh, DOE commercial uh, prototype buildings, um, uh, air leakage uh, rate calculation, uh, there are some some of the uh, default values that are typically used, um, and uh, by doing so, it, it just doesn't take effect uh, into account the effects of temperature difference and and others. Uh, one um, a significant uh, assumption is also that uh, in the um, infiltration design um, uh, term is that when uh, H when the HVC is on that there's a 75% reduction in, in uh, air leakage. And uh, so here are some initial results of the impact of that 75% um, reduction uh, assumption. It holds actually quite well for, uh, in cases where there's a low leakage rate in buildings, but uh, as you go, uh, as you um, delve into buildings that have a high leakage, a higher leakage rates, uh, that's when there is a huge discrepancy between uh, the simplified um, uh, model and a uh, detailed model. Uh, for instance, by reducing it um, from 1.06 CFM per square foot um, down to 0.39 or uh, on the SI uh, 5.4 uh, liters per second per meter squared down to two, um, the simplified model uh, would estimate a uh, energy savings of a thousand dollars, but with the more detailed model that takes the various uh, variables into account, uh, it's actually a five thousand um, uh, energy savings um, uh, potential. So the uh, objective uh, was to create an easy to use online tool using the simulation results of the best-in-class building energy simulation tool, Energy Plus, 
and a whole building airflow simulation tool content. Um, and uh, so to have an online calculator that estimates the potential energy and cost savings and reduction in moisture transfer uh, from improvements in air tightness. And this is a project, uh, again, led by Oak Ridge National Lab uh, uh, with partners uh, and, and uh, of uh, NIST and funding uh, um, as well from, from ABBA. So this is uh, a, a high-level uh, overview of how um, this tool uh, works. Uh, it starts off with an energy uh, plus simulation. Um, uh, taking the uh, max HVC and ventilation airflow rates into the CONTAM uh, uh, model, uh, where it, uh, it uh, takes uh, weather uh, and um, uh, additional building uh, details and calculates an hourly infiltration rates, which then goes back into Energy Plus. Um, to develop a um, more realistic uh, energy uh, savings um, uh, opportunity, uh, as well as uh, user-specified uh, information in terms of the city, the building type, footprint area, before and after retrofit air tightness and energy rates, uh, to then um, output the potential energy and cost savings uh, and reduction in moisture transfer. Uh, this tool is uh, easy to find. So in Google, you can put in infiltration calculator or air leakage calculator, and uh, it's uh, among the uh, 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 first first page. Uh, so this is the tool, the web-based energy savings calculator for building envelope air tightness, uh, and it's uh, uh, easy to use. Uh, so uh, the, again, um, the user can input the location, building type, floor area, envelope air tightness, energy rate. You can switch between uh, the various uh, uh, units uh, and uh, there are descriptions of the input parameters um, are available. So in, in this, um, uh, these, these are um, some of the locations that have already been modeled. So all of the simulations have already been uh, put into a database. Um, and uh, so as the user uh, adds additional information, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, before I go, uh, so uh, we, the building types are the uh, DOE commercial prototype uh, building models, uh, which are uh, ASHRAE 90.1 uh, 2013 uh, compliant. There are 16 building types. Uh, uh, the first three model uh, building types that have been uh, modeled and are part of the calculator are the standalone retail, medium office, and mid-rise apartments uh, in this first phase, which represents about 20, 20, uh, almost 29% per, uh, of the building footprint. Uh, and next, uh, 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 four additional uh, building types are uh, will be um, added to the uh, tool um, in this next phase phase high-rise apartments, hostels, large hotel, and secondary schools. Uh, these are just the uh, 16 uh, prototype uh, building models. Uh, here, the uh, specs uh, of the standalone retail building. Um, and uh, if you look at in, in the uh, uh, middle uh, with the air leakage rates, uh, here's again the assumption. Um, that is typically used, um, uh, but that is not being uh, used in the present study. Uh, we also included uh, some uh, different uh, cases uh, of, of air leakage. Different uh, air leakage rates. Uh, the user can also uh, either select default values for electricity, natural, uh, natural gas, or input uh, user-defined rates. Uh, and here are some uh, examples. I'm running out of time, but uh, just wanted to uh, show you. So here, uh, this is a standalone um, uh, retail building. The base case is 5.4. 
uh, uh, retrofitting to two, um, and uh, there are some uh, energy rates. So, so this model then uh, outputs the electricity, electricity uh, costs and gas cost savings um, for you, so that you can model uh, various uh, buildings uh, as as an assessment and see if a retrofit. Uh, opportunity would make sense for this building before doing uh, really in-depth um, uh, modeling uh, exercises. Uh, here are some sample cities. Uh, I'm going to uh, go pr pretty quick on here. Uh, this is a uh, graph on, uh, again, the energy savings uh, versus leakage rate. So if you reduce uh, area leakage rate from um, about uh, five or five and a half uh, uh, liters per uh, um, uh, second meter uh, squared uh, down to uh, two. Um, so that would be the 12.5 minus 9.6 uh, uh, thousand uh, energy savings uh, potential. Um, uh, in terms of um, moisture, uh, y y I I'm just going to skip this and go straight to the uh, summary. Uh, here, you, you, uh, there's an analysis um, of, uh, for moisture transfer in, in, in a uh, building type in Chicago, um, for the various uh, building types in, in Chicago. Um, so you can see that there's actually a lot of moisture transfer uh, at at the base case uh, scenarios and um, so reducing inf infiltration uh, it doesn't just um, uh, save you uh, energy in terms of the uh, uh, heat uh, load or or cooling loads uh, depending on on the season um, re uh, related to air leakage but also significantly reduces your moisture transfer. Uh, through the envelope um, and uh, there for um, uh, uh, being able to uh, have a much more durable uh, and less less uh, moisture prone uh, envelope. Uh, here are some references that um, uh, regarding the uh, tool. Uh, here um, the uh, four. Uh, uh, Building uh, types uh, that will be uh, included in the calculator uh, uh, in the next phase, and I want to uh, conclude that uh, w the uh, building envelope R&D roadmap was published in 2014, but we're currently uh, looking at uh, updating it um, later this year. Uh, so with that, here's my contact information. And I'll let uh, Steve continue. Thank you, Sven. I appreciate the uh, the intro and uh, uh, very interesting information on uh, retrofits. Um, my name is Steve Champlin. I am the president of Thermalite, and what we do is we address the window openings in uh, buildings. We uh, do not typically replace windows. Uh, we add. Uh, an existing window to the building, keeping the original window in place. What this does is it reduces the amount of cost in the window material and installation while utilizing the energy benefits, although they might not be great, of the existing window that sometimes may be 80 or 90 years old. So what we do is we make the existing windows better, and I think there's a good opportunity out there for, uh, for this in the future. Um, I am trying to uh, Heidi next slide if uh, if I don't have control. Okay, uh, the Department of Energy uh, in 2011 uh, they have a lot of data on their website, and they did a study of the commercial buildings, uh, residential buildings, and uh, they determined that 53% of all commercial buildings uh, still have single-pane glass. Uh, single-pane glass is the most 
uh, energy inefficient uh, type of uh, glass product out there for windows. Uh, there are just a tremendous amount of that type of glass out there in the marketplace today. Uh, it's expensive to replace uh, windows. Uh, sometimes buildings are historic. In many cases, uh, it's too disruptive. So uh, a lot of times uh, owners of buildings decide not to uh, replace any of the windows. Uh, so uh, there are still a tremendous amount of uh, single pane windows in the marketplace today. Uh, the next slide. Heidi, oh, there we, there we go. Um, so what, what, what I'd like to do is, is uh, do a little bit more of a qualitative overview of, of how to look at uh, glazing. Uh, windows represent a, a huge opportunity, not only from the standpoint of there's so many single pane windows in existence, but uh, it, from Sven's earlier comments, they represent the largest area of heat flow uh, through the building and heat loss. So with the exception of really one slide in my presentation, I'd like to just present a way to approach buildings and to look at windows, whether they're good candidates or, or not. So typically, uh, people, you know, put put windows into a few different categories. They they look at glass and they they realize they have an issue. Here are some uh, options that they might have: uh, window films and blinds. Uh, that would be the easiest way to uh, address a window problem. Uh, the issue with films is that they they don't address air infiltration or anything uh, meaningful uh, with the insulation. What they do is they tint. Uh, the glass, similar to uh, what you what you may see in cars, and it does provide some comfort. But a lot of the window films and blinds, for that matter, too, whatever they don't reflect out of the building, they absorb and re-radiate back into the room. And in some cases, that's an issue. Uh, replacement windows would be the most expensive option. Uh, if windows keep the water out of the building, uh, keep uh, the wind for the most part from being felt through the window opening. Uh, really what you should look at is keeping those windows in, potentially repairing uh, the, the windows if they're, are, if they're leaking through caulk, and make the existing windows better by adding high-performing glass or potentially, uh, potentially uh, retrofitting the windows. Many cases, uh, building owners do nothing, which is why most of the windows out there in buildings right now are original and single pane. And another option that's really not uh, widely known but have, has been picking up uh, use more in the federal market is secondary glazing. In secondary glazing, the, the building uh, would, would be retrofit with an exterior window option, keeping the original in place, or an interior option making the existing window uh, perform at a higher level. Okay, the next slide. Uh, if we can go back one, uh, there is a slide that has, uh, there we go, commercial building insulation. Uh, Sven talked about goals set for 2030. Uh, there was a study commissioned uh, in 2010 uh, by McKinsey Consulting looking at greenhouse gas emissions, using greenhouse gas emission reduction as a surrogate for uh, energy uh, reduction, uh, they took a look at all the different technologies out there that would reduce greenhouse gas emission. There's one technology thought where you would make energy more efficient and clean, and the other uh, school of thought is you control your systems better or improve the efficiency. Uh, on the x-axis is the total cumulative uh, abatement potential for certain technologies. The wider the bar, the larger that opportunity is. Some of the largest uh, bars there would be nuclear energy. Uh, that would be clean energy, wouldn't produce uh, greenhouse gases, uh, but uh, is expensive uh, to create these, these uh, plants. Uh, the y-axis is the incremental abatement cost. Anything uh, on the positive uh, on, on the y-axis means that it costs more than it saves. Anything on the negative means that it's, it's uh, cost favorable. 
the investment would pay for itself over time. So the, the, the uh, technologies on the far left uh, would have the largest payback per McKinsey. Uh, lighting, uh, switching from uh, incandescent lights to LEDs, we do a lot of in this industry. Uh, no surprise that that is one of the biggest returns that they're looking at. Uh, residential electronics and appliances, we hear about those all the time. The, the, the one item that struck me here is at the bottom, it's one of the higher performing items would be insulation retrofit commercial. Looking deeper into the report, the reason why this uh, has such a, uh, a good return is that there is no maintenance cost when you uh, retrofit a, a commercial building with insulation. Uh, just like your home, you can put it in your building and 20 years later, uh, you're not you're not replacing or, or uh, repairing anything. A lot of these other technologies that we use, there's a lot of replacement uh, and cost to operate uh, the technology into the future. The next slide is uh, just an example, just some pictures of what interior windows look like. Um, they're they're placed on the inside of the building. Uh, typically, uh, they're what the idea here is you want to maximize the amount of glass uh, in the opening and, and really minimizing uh, the overall intrusion or look of the, of the uh, interior window. Uh, the one on the top left is a little bit heftier because that just happens to be a blast window put into a federal building. Um, the one on the right is a uh, army base. Uh, those two are, are blast windows. Uh, bottom left would be a curtain wall retrofit. Uh, pretty slender profile, maximize the glass, minimize the, the frame. Uh, and on the bottom right would be arched windows. So there, there's a, really not many windows you cannot Im implement this uh, interior or exterior retrofit uh, strategy on. All, all windows, as long as they are in reasonable shape, uh, you, you can look at retrofitting with different types of glazing. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about heat transfer through fenestration. Uh, primarily you get convection, conduction, and radiation. Those are the three forms of, of heat transfer. Uh, radiation uh, is the solar radiation primarily coming in through the glass. Uh, you have convection, which is air moving, uh, air infiltration, and exfiltration through the window members, window, window components. Uh, and you'll also get convection through the airspace, potentially. Uh, conduction is a big uh, issue. You get conduction uh, heat uh, flowing into cold through the window, glass, and through the window frame. So there's a lot of different areas that, um, that you have heat transfer issues. One way to address that is to utilize the existing window and place another window on the interior of that existing window. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, just a, a, a basic heat flow uh, equation. You get convection, conduction, and radiation. And uh, on the uh, previous slide where you have the, um, uh, the equation, uh, what I wanted to point out, it was the interior temperature uh, and the exterior temperature being the largest uh, factor. So just, Heidi, just one more. Okay, so the first uh, part of that equation is the conduction. And conduction uh, consists of the U value in, in fenestration. Uh, it's the reciprocal of R. So a U value of a window that would have an R value of 2, uh, the U value is 0.5. So the lower the U value means the better the insulation value of the window. Uh, area of the window is consistent. That's the next term. But the delta T is the temperature on the inside of the building and the outside of the building. The larger that number is, the bigger the, the effect of the uh, insulation of the window or really anything, the wall or, or, or whatever you're doing. Uh, so what that means is that any insulation project uh, is best suited for uh, cold weather. Uh, you'll have a larger uh, payback in uh, areas where the delta T is, is 50 degrees for days at a time, which might consist in Chicago, 
Illinois or New York where uh, the outside temperature would be 20 degrees, the inside temperature of the building might be 70 degrees. That's, that represents a better opportunity for glazing uh, than in Phoenix where the delta T might be 30 degrees for part of the day. The solar effect is uh, the energy that comes through the window. Uh, the solar heat gain coefficient uh, can be manipulated with different types of glass. Solar heat gain coefficient is a value from zero to one. So the lower the number, the less uh, solar energy comes through the window opening. So you want to take a look at that. And air infiltration, we talked a little bit, or Sven talked about that. Um, there are other factors here. It's uh, uh, specific density, humidity, uh, which would be represented by the rho, which is that little p number, uh, and the c, uh, sub p. Uh, those are all uh, important to look at. So in moist uh, areas of the, of the country, uh, you'd have more of a heat transfer out of the building than you would in drier climates. And once again, in air infiltration, you also have the temperature as, as a factor, uh, which is the delta T. So uh, the first effect is conduction, the second is radiation, and then air infiltration is convection. Those are the three areas of heat transfer. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, the next slide shows a, a simulation of a, of a window cross section. Uh, on the bottom right, you would have uh, a, uh, a single pane uh, curtain wall, and on the left, you would have a retrofit curtain wall. Uh, you can easily uh, simulate the differences uh, in uh, software used by the Department of Energy called Thurman Window, so you know with a very good degree of certainty what you would have in a building, what you would what you currently have and what you would improve to to use in your eQuest or your Energy Plus simulations. Uh, one note here is that the, uh, there is vacuum insulated glass that is available. The concept here is to use the best performing glass. That does the work. So use high, high performing insulated product, maybe to make it triple pane or vacuum insulated, which has tremendous values of R11. Next slide. Uh, this just shows the value of going to different types of glazing, which can easily be done with the first step. You show the thermal simulation, what the U-values will be with the frame and the glass, and you can put in different types of glazing systems to see what your monthly utility bills, once the, once the model is calibrated through eQuest, you could run uh, different models easily. Next slide. Uh, this is an eQuest uh, output chart which shows where the savings uh, occur in a building. Uh, at the bottom on the right hand side you'll see the space heating savings. The blue bar is the existing and the silver and the green are two different types of glazing options that you might want. Uh, space cooling is another large one but you'll also see ventilation and pumps, moving air around the building, uh, warm air or cool air uh, uses electricity, so that uh, might be an unexpected savings that you'd see. Next slide. Uh, sensitivity an analysis uh, you can perform to see the window-to-wall ratio in a building. If you use 20% window-to-wall ratio to 80%, uh, it's a pretty linear relationship. So uh, the, estim the estimates that you perform on a building uh, can be uh, really looked at as a function of surface area of window space in a building, and you can make extrapolations from certain uh, case studies that you may have or uh, research that is done. You can make uh, heat flow uh, uh, estimates on different types of buildings uh, pretty reliably. Next slide. This is the... Uh, uh, the, the concepts that I'd like like everybody to remember, the, the glass and the frames, um, monolithic and, and, and thermally non-broken or steel or aluminum frames, those represent the largest opportunity. Uh, when, when you look at uh, windows, don't just look at the glass. You have to take a look and model the entire uh, frame of the window. Uh, steel windows are... Uh, our issues and, and so are uh, older aluminum systems with non-thermal systems. 
So what you'd like to do is create a thermal break uh, by installing a window not uh, touching the existing window, but add some space so you'll have a natural thermal break there. Uh, weather zones, the coldest climates, represent the largest uh, area of uh, opportunity as compared to the warm climate. So cold climates represent the largest delta T, which would affect your air infiltration savings and your insulation savings. Uh, window location, uh, you, you would like to encapsulate the entire window opening. So if you, uh, if you install a window in front of the existing frame, not only would you insulate that existing frame by not touching it, you'd also address all the air infiltration that will be uh, going through the, the uh, window frame. So that, that is really a key concept. So look for window sills, uh, an area to sit uh, an existing uh, or an interior window system in front of the existing window. That's a good one. And, and lastly, uh, this I'm just touching on this, but this is a major uh, thing to take a look at, is that not only retrofits of, of building envelopes, not only are you reducing your, your electricity costs and your heating costs, but you're also reducing the total demand needed to heat and cool that building by by a larger percentage than your savings. So if if, if you could save 20% in a building on, on the heat, you're probably saving, you're probably reducing the load in that building uh, or the capacity by 30 to 40%. So this is a consideration when you're looking at retrofitting buildings and you need to replace the heating and air conditioning systems is the amount that you could reduce the total uh, capacity of your project by addressing the building envelope. And I believe that's it for that slide. My apologies on uh, on that. My contact information is there. Uh, if you'd like it, any more information of uh, projects uh, that we've done, I'd be happy to uh, send that off to you. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, I know Someone asked that we show the um, contact information again, so I will I will get to that other slide, or I'll send it to you separately, um, so you have that. Um, let's see. Someone asked, is Sven involved in the Benefit 2018 project? So the uh, benefit uh, 2018 uh, is is the uh, funding opportunity. Uh, yes, our our uh, emerging technologies uh, program has um, released that. I believe about a week ago, um, and uh, concept papers are due uh, June eighth. So, so yes, I, I don't know if you, if there were any uh, specific questions on that. But. Okay. Uh, does the air leakage tool have options to enter metal wall and or roof panel envelope? That's for you, Sven. So, so the uh, calculator uses um, the uh, DOE um, prototypical uh, building models. Um, and uh, as, as such, uh, there, there are several uh, user, um, I, I guess, uh, uh, to cut to the chase, uh, no, you cannot um, uh, include that. Um, but um, uh, it, it, it is based on, on the uh, 16 uh, prototypical uh, building models. Okay, I think that's it for now. Um, again, if you have any other questions, I'm sure both our speakers would be happy to answer you directly through email. Um, so again, thank you to Sven and Steve. It was a great presentation and I'll be sending out the recording and a link to the slides as well uh, as soon as I can get that uh, posted. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, Sven. Thank you.